Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, statistics. And uh, in this particular lesson, instead of doing it on my whiteboard, because there's so much work that needs to be done on the computer with this lesson, I decided to do the whole thing on my computer. Uh, and I know that you prefer to see me up at the whiteboard. Well, let's say that I pretend or imagine that you prefer to see me up at the whiteboard because I prefer to be up at the whiteboard. But so let's just keep pretending, okay? But I'm gonna do this on the computer uh, because uh, it's easier uh, in this particular case to do it on the computer. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. What we're learning today is called multiple regression. And this procedure is extremely difficult without a computer. Uh, in fact, I don't know of anybody who really has ever done multiple regression on purpose without a computer. So. Um, but before I teach you that, I need to show you how to do something in Excel. And that is I need to show you how to cut and paste uh, data in Excel. Now, you probably already know how to cut and paste data. Like when you're writing a research paper. Step one, open up a Word document. Step two, go to Wikipedia and type in the name of what you're, you're researching. Step three, highlight the first three paragraphs of the Wikipedia entry. And then step four, copy and then paste it into your paper, right? That's what you're supposed to do. So what is your preferred method for copy and paste? Are you the kind of person who likes to uh, select what you're going to copy? Well, let's say right here, select what you're going to copy. And then do you right click and then click on copy and then click where you want to paste and then right click and then click on paste? See, now in Excel, we have multiple paste options. But if you want to use paste in Excel, really the, main, the, the first one you see is the main paste option. Okay? All right, that's one possibility. Another possibility is uh, maybe you're a control C kind of person and then you paste with control V. So you can highlight some data in Excel. You can hit control C and then you can click where you want to paste it and then click control V and it'll paste it there, okay? So uh, Excel will do uh, cutting and pasting precisely how you normally do it with words, uh, maybe in the internet or, or whatnot. Uh, but the reason I'm showing you how to do this cutting and pasting is because this multiple regression that we're gonna do right now uh, requires you to eliminate variables, but because we have to have all of our data next to each other, if we have to eliminate a middle variable, see which, well, let me show you, see this variable or this uh, data right here, hopefully you can see it okay. Uh, if I wanted to, I have x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. If I want to get rid of x4, I can't just delete it. I need to, uh, now I could get rid of the whole column. I could just highlight the com column and then right click and get rid of it and delete it. That's one way to get rid of it. And so if you want to do that, that's fine. But I, I like to keep my data around. So what I'll do is I will copy everything on the left side and I'll kind of bring it down here, paste. And then I'll copy everything on the right side, copy, and I'll bring it down and I'll paste it right next to it. So now they're all still right next to each other and I've left out uh, X4, okay? So that is uh, one way to copy and paste. And you have to be able to do that in Excel to do what I'm going to show you right now, okay? Or you can just eliminate the column. You can uh, click on the letter at the top of the whole column. You can right click and then hit delete and that'll get rid of the whole column. Uh, if you hit undo, it'll come back, okay? All right, so, but somehow or another, you have to be able to get rid of columns of data so that you can make sure all your data is next to each other. So let's go through the procedure here real quick. Uh, I'm teaching you multiple regression. And the first step is for you to enter all of the X values uh, into Excel, into columns. So X1 will go here, then X2 in the next column, then in the next column. And they have to be adjacent. Whoops, I put adjacent. It's uh, adjacent. Let's change that. Adjacent columns. Enter data for all X's into adjacent columns. They have to be right next to each other. All of your X's have to be right next to each other. Uh, then enter your Y data. Now, the Y data doesn't necessarily have to be next to the X's, but I usually put it there anyway. All right, so that's step one. So then step two is do linear regression. Uh, and then, well, actually, you know what? Let's go through these, these steps in just a few minutes when we actually do it. 
All right, but let me explain what multiple regression is. Previously, we learned linear regression. And in linear regression, we were only concerned with comparing two variables, an input variable and an output variable. How does the input variable affect the output variable? And how can we predict the output variable based on an input variable? But in real life, a lot of things aren't only affected by one thing. There are lots of things in this world that are affected by multiple things. For example, the height of a person is probably affected maybe by the height of their father and probably by the height of their mother. Uh, they might even be affected by the height of their grandfather and their grandmother. So let's say we got a father, mother, two grandparents on the father's side and two grandparents on the mother's side. That's six different things that could be affecting this kid's height. So um, what we could do is we could measure the height of all four grandparents and measure the heights of the mo mother and the father. That's six different variables. Uh, and we can, call the, we can ha call one the grandmother the maternal grandmother and one the paternal grandmother. And then we can measure the height of the actual of the child, or we could do this with adults, and then create a very large, somewhat complicated model that indicates how a person's height is affected by uh, their mother, their father, and their grandparents. Okay, um, <clears throat> so that's what's happening here. So I have given you some data, uh, and the idea with multiple regression is. Uh, in addition to predicting what the model will be given a whole bunch of inputs, we also want to determine whether any of these variables might not be significant. And so what we do is we do the multiple regression, but while we're doing the multiple regression, we start removing variables that show up as not significant. So at the same time that we do the, the multiple regression, we're also going, going to do significance tests. So here's what you're going to need. Uh, the kind of test we're going to do, just like the linear regression, is a t-test. So I'm going to make a, make a, a note down here. Um, this is a t-test, okay? And because it's a t-test, we're going to need an alpha. And so here's what I'm going to tell you is that I'm going to go to insert here. I'm going to go over here to symbol. I'm going to select alpha. Uh, and then we're going to say alpha is equal to 0.05. What I'm saying is for all these multiple regression problems, in the real world it's not always 0.05. That's not always our level of significance. But in this class, I'm only going to test you on uh, alpha of 0.05. But these are all two-tail tests. So we're going to have to divide our alpha by 2, which means that our p-value is always going to be 0.025. You should be writing these things down. So the p-value is always going to be 0.025. The alpha is always going to be 0.05. It's always a t-test. And because it's always a t-test, you're going to need a t-table. So you may want to go get your t-table. OK, here's a t-table. And we're always going to use 0.025 as the p. OK, so we're only going to use this column right here. All right, now let's go back here. Uh, I think this works. Yeah, there we go. Uh, lastly, we need degrees of freedom, right? Because we're doing a t-test, so we need degrees of freedom. Now, I need to tell you how to get your degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom are going to be n minus. Now, previously, we've had degrees of freedom are either n minus 1 or n minus 2, right? Well, in this case, because we have lots and lots of variables, and in this case, we have six different variables, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, and y, which makes 6. So we have 6 variables. And so the degrees of freedom is always going to be n minus the number of variables. But I'm going to show you how to easily find the degrees of freedom from the output of the multiple regression. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do a multiple regression. Step one is enter the data for all the x's, which I have done here. They're all entered in Excel. This is Excel and enter the y data. It's entered right here. Then it says do linear regression selecting all columns of x's for the input x range. Well, let's see what that looks like. I'm going to click on data. Then I'm going to go to data analysis here. And here's our data analysis window. We're going to select regression. 
Then we're going to click OK. And it's going to give us the dialog box for a regression. Now under input Y range, I'm going to click on this right here and I'm going to select all the Y's. Now I'm going to include the label. See this label Y at the top of the column? I'm going to show you later why it's important that I select the label. Uh, so I'm going to select the label, press enter. Then do you see where it says input X range? I'm going to click on this right here and I'm going to select all of the X's. See I selected five columns and all of the rows. And then I'm going to press enter. And then do you see this place where it says labels? Make sure that's checked. Because we selected the labels, because we included the labels in the regression, we're going to click on labels showing that we're including the labels. And then here it says output range. I'm going to select this right up this cell right up here and press enter. You don't have to click anything else and I'm going to hit OK. And now here is my output for linear regression. Now I want to show you in particular uh, down here, see this X1, X2, X3, X4, X5? Because there are multiple X variables, that's why we used the labels is because we don't want this to say X variable 1 and X variable 2 and X variable 3, 4, and 5. And you might say, why not? Because it says X1, X2, X3, X4, and X5. Well, what happens if I eliminate X2? If I eliminate X2 and put X3 right next to X1, then later it'll say X1 or X variable 1 and then X variable 2 instead of saying X variable 3. Okay? It's a, it's a thing with Excel. Just trust me when I say, go ahead and put in the labels. It's important. All right, now, step three says, select the X coefficient with the T statistic closest to zero. So we want to go where our T statistics are. So here's our output and here's T stat. Okay? And we want to pick the T statistic that is closest to zero. Now if you look at all these numbers, now ignore the intercept. We're going to ignore the intercept for now. Don't pay any attention to the intercept. We're only looking at the X variables here. And the T statistic closest to zero is this one right here. See this negative 0.6365? That is the T statistic that is closest to zero. So that is the first one that we're going to test. Okay? And the way we're going to test it is we need a critical T value from the T table. All right, so we're at the T table, but uh, in order to do the T table, whoops. We need, we know we're going to go to the 0.05 column because it's a, we're doing a 0.05 uh, alpha and we're dividing it by 2. That gives us 0.025. But we need a degrees of freedom. Well, let me show you where to get the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom will always be in your summary output. Do you see this word residual and degrees of freedom? The residual degrees of freedom is your degrees of freedom for this test. Okay? So, uh, our degrees of freedom in this particular case is 6. Okay? So, we are going to go here. We're going to go over to a 6 degrees of freedom. We're going to go along that row to the column where it's 0.025. And our degrees of freedom is 2.447. And that would be plus or minus 2.477 because it is a, so I'm going to put over here, uh, critical T value or T crit is going to be plus or minus 2.447. All right. And I, let's go get, let's see here. Let's get the symbol, the plus or minus symbol. Is it around here somewhere? There it is. All right. So plus or minus. So the critical T value, actually, I'm going to put it up over here. There we go. Our critical T value is 2.447 make it red and bold. There we go. 2.447. So our T statistic has to be either larger than positive 2.447 or less than negative 2.447. Another way to think about it is in absolute values. The absolute value of our T statistic here has to be larger than the absolute value of the critical T value, 2.447.
Well, this, the absolute value of negative 0.636 is positive 6.636. And 0.636 is not larger than 2.447. That means that x1, this x1 variable, is not significant. And because it is not significant, we are going to eliminate it. Okay? So we're going to leave it out. So watch what I'm going to do. I am going to uh, delete x1. All right. There we go. I'm going to delete x1. All right, now I only have x2, x3, x4, x5, and, and, and then y. And now, if I, when I go over here, step three, it says, uh, if your x is significant, you're done with step three. But it's not significant, so we've got to go to, to part B here. Uh, it says, if it's not significant, remove this x variable from the analysis and repeat steps two and three. Okay, I removed it. I'm going to go to step two, which is do linear regression. So I'm going to do the linear regression again. So data, data analysis, regression, hit OK. Uh, the y range is right here. X range, I'm going to make it only these right here. Enter. And I'm going to have the output range in the same place. I'm going to hit OK. Overwrite, yes, OK. And look at this. Now, look at our output here. X1 is left out. Now it's just X2, X3, X4, and X5. So now, we want to find the T statistic with the smallest, or excuse me, with the T, st the T statistic that is closest to zero. So this one is negative four, this one's four, this one's negative three, and this one's negative one. This one, x2, is closest to zero. And now look at our degrees of freedom. Our degrees of freedom are now seven. So we gotta go get a new t critical t value. We're still gonna stay in the 0.025, but now we're gonna have a degrees of freedom of seven. And now our t critical t, uh, t value is 2.365. All right, 2.365. So it's plus or minus 2.365. We're going to compare that to this number over here. And look, this number, the absolute value here is 1.37. It's not larger than the absolute value of the, of the critical t value. And therefore, x2 is not significant because it's not larger than. So we're going to get rid of x2. And that leaves x3, x4, and x5. So we're going to do the, the multiple regression again. We're going to go to data, data analysis, regression. And now we're only going to select x3, x4, and x5. Enter. Hit OK. Overwrite the output. And look, notice. The residual, the degrees of freedom, it went up again. Now our degrees of freedom are 8. So we're going to go back to our T table, go to degrees of freedom 8, go to 0.025, and our, uh, our critical T value is 2.306. So we're going to change this to 2.306. And now let's look at all our T statistics. All right, it looks like the one that's closest to zero is this one right here, this x3. But look, that's negative 3.636. The absolute value of that is 3.636, which is larger than the critical t value 2.306. Therefore, the x coefficient with a t statistic closer to zero is significant. And if it's significant, then we're done with step three. It says if it's significant, you're done with step three. Now we're going to go on to step four. Test the significance of the intercept coefficient. Well, here's the intercept right here. Here's the coefficient. Go over to the t statistic, and it's 6.75. That's a lot larger than 2.306. Therefore, the intercept is also significant. And what that means is that we are done. This is our model, and these are our coefficients. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, I'm going to switch over to another uh, page, and I'm going to show you now. Well, actually, I'm just going to scroll down here. And down here, I'm going to show you how to type in your equation. Okay? All right, so this is our intercept coefficient. So what we're going to write is y hat. Now, I can't, well, I can put a hat on here. Let's see if I can remember how to do that. I'm going to go to insert symbol 
and then I'm going to go down here to character code and put an 0302 enter and then close and it did it put a little tiny hat it's hard to see the hat though but just know there's a little there's a if you look real close here yeah, let's see here let's zoom in here see that little hat right there it didn't do a very good job but it put a hat on there okay all right so now um, let's go over here yes yeah, where we are uh, there we go all right so we got y hat is equal to and what we're gonna put in is the coefficients one at a time the first we'll put in the intercept 93.246 so 93.246 and then we're going to go one x value at a time. We're going to do x3, then x4, then x5. Okay? So the first we put the coefficient, which is negative 0.064. So I'll put minus 0.064 and then x, x3. The next coefficient is positive 3.194. So I'm going to put plus 3.194. And then this is variable x4. In fact, let me put it in parentheses, the x4. x4. Sorry. x3. And then the last coefficient is negative 1.012. So I'll put minus 1.012 and then x5. And what you're looking at right here, this is now our regression equation. Let's outline that. There we go. Here's our regression equation. It is a multiple regression equation and it includes one, two, three variables. Why does it have three variables? Because three variables are significant. Okay? And so that is how we do multiple regression. Uh, I think we should do another example, at least one more example. Let's get rid of this. And we'll clear that out. All right. And we will get rid of this and do another example. And I'll put some more, inf more data in here. Okay. I'm going to go get example number two, get my data for example two, come back to the notes. And there we go. All right. Oh, it got rid of my thing down here that said this is a t test. This is a t test. Okay. All right. So, what I recommend you do right now, actually, is pause the video, enter all this data. Yes, I know, it's going to take you like seven or eight minutes, but that's the job. Okay, if you're going to be able to do this, you need to, you need to be able to enter the data. Enter all this data in X1. Make sure you put the label at the top, then X2, X3, X4, then X5, then Y. Okay, so pause the video and enter the data. Okay, so... Hopefully now you have all the data entered in Excel. Hopefully you have a T table lying around somewhere. And so now uh, we are going to do multiple regression again. So step one, enter all the data. You already did that. Step two, do linear regression selecting all of the X columns. Okay, well we can't select anything. First we have to click on data, then data analysis, then we're going to select regression and OK. When this dialog box opens up, under input Y range, we're going to click on this button over here. We're going to select the Y letter with all of the numbers and press enter. Under input X range, we're going to click on this button over here. And we're going to click on the X labels and all the numbers, all five columns. Press enter. Uh, we're going to make sure labels is clicked. Put a, put a check mark in labels. Make sure there is not a check mark in constant is zero. We're going to get to that later. All right, then under output range, make, uh, just select uh, any cell over on the side, press enter, and then we're going to click OK. Now, the first thing I want to know is what are my degrees of freedom? Here, the, the residual degrees of freedom are eight. So I'm going to go to the T table. I'm going to go to the column that says 0.025. I'm going to go to degrees of freedom 8, and it's already highlighted, 2.306. So I know that my critical T value here is going to be 2.306. Then I'm going to go down to all my variables, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5, and I'm going to look at the T statistics for each one. 
and I'm looking for the one that is closest to zero. If there's two of them that are equally close to zero, just pick one, okay? But usually that's not gonna happen. So look, it looks to me like this one's close to zero, the 0 0.87, but look at this one. This is 0 0.17. This one is closest to zero. So I'm gonna highlight that. So we're gonna com compare this number, this number, the absolute value of this number, it's already positive, uh, but it has to be larger than 2.306. It's not larger than 2.306. So we are going to eliminate this variable right here. We're gonna eliminate x1. All right, so you're like, do we always eliminate x1? No, it just happens in both of these examples that we're eliminating x1. Okay, so now, because we eliminated a variable, we have to do the regression again. Go to data, go to data analysis, choose regression, select your Y input, good. Select your X input. This time, it's only four variables. Enter, make sure your labels are checked. Select an output and then hit OK. When you get this dialog box, it's just saying, Output range will overwrite existing data, and as long as it's only overwriting what you've had before, the, data, the output you had before, that's fine. So I'm going to hit OK, and here's my new output. Now, I have a new degrees of freedom. It's now 9. So I'm going to go here, and at 9, my uh, new critical T value is 2.262. And so, let's go back here, 2.262, new critical T. 2.262, and now I'm going to look for the T statistic that is closest to zero. Well, here it is. It's uh, variable, uh, variable X3 has a T statistic closer to zero than, than all the other ones, okay? So, uh, and since this, the T statistic, 0.917, is smaller than the critical T value, 2.262, we are going to eliminate X3. We're going to get rid of it. So watch what I'm going to do. The way I'm going to eliminate it is I'm going to copy the X2, which we're keeping. I'm going to hit Control. Well, I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to, yeah, let me hit Control Copy. Then I'm going to overwrite X3. See, I'll hit V. Whoops, it wouldn't let me. Control Copy and then Control V. And now I'm going to delete it from this column so that all I have left is three columns of data, X2, X4, and X5. And now, I'm going to do the regression again. Data, data analysis, regression. This time for the X range, I'm only going to select these three variables and then click OK. Overwrite, yes. And now I only have three variables here. My new degrees of freedom is 10. So I got to go back to the T table, go to degrees of freedom 10. And the new critical T value is 2.228. So critical T, 2.228. And now I'm going to go down to my T statistics. Here's one. Now this is really close, isn't it? Look at this. This one right here is 2.246, but it's larger than 2.228, and therefore it is significant. So we're going to keep it. And because it was the closest one, that automatically means that the other two variables are also significant. And then, so now what we want to do is we want to test the significance of the intercept coefficient. Okay, so let's go to the intercept. We'll go to the T statistic. It's the absolute value is 2.865, which is significant. Okay, and so this is our model. We're going to say Y hat is equal to negative 18, whoops, what did I just do there? I, I shouldn't have clicked on that. Okay, here we go, y equals, here's our intercept coefficient, negative 18, point, uh, 635, point 0.635, then we're gonna go to x2, and, and so our first one is uh, plus 0.469, plus 0.469, and the variable is x2, and then we have positive 0.897 plus 0.897, the variable is x4, okay? 
And the last one is positive 0 0.304. So plus 0 0.304 and the variable is x5. And now this is our regression equation, our multiple regression equation. Multiple meaning there are multiple, there's more than one uh, input variable. Okay. Now I want to show you something that would have happened. What if, what if, let's just say what if, um, let's get rid of this. What if when we were testing this x4 coefficient, what if instead this was 2.219? Uh, what if this uh, t statistic was 2.219? It's really close to the critical t value, 2.228, but it's still smaller. And so we would get rid of it completely. Okay, uh, so you have to be careful about that. Make sure you're following whatever rules, statistical rules you set for yourself or I set for you. Follow those rules. And if that was the case, we would then have to get rid of x4. How would I get rid of x4? Well, I would highlight x2, copy, paste, and then delete this. And now all I have left is x2, x5, and y, right? And then I would go do... We're going to go through the whole thing. We're going to pretend like this happened, okay? We're going to go to data, data analysis, regression. We're going to select only these two variables for inputs, enter, and we're going to hit OK, and then overwrite the output. And now look, we would now test X5, because look at the um, T statistic. Our new degrees of freedom would be 11, and so we'd go to the T table and we'd have 2.201. So we come back here and we do 2.201. But and so x5 passes because it's 2.638, and then x2 also passes. But watch this, something really interesting just happened. Look, now because we took that other variable out, the intercept is not significant anymore. Look at this. It's now uh, 1.649, which is smaller than 2.201. And that means that the intercept coefficient is not significant. What would we do then? Well, let's go over to our procedure here. Over here, test the significance of the intercept coefficient says, if it is not significant, do a final regression with constant is zero. And what that means is we need to go into data analysis again. Go to data analysis. We're going to do the same regression, the same exact one we just did, only look here. We're going to click on constant is zero. Okay? We're going to hit OK. We're going to overwrite the previous results. And now, oh my goodness, look what happened. We, we now have the new regression where the coefficient is zero and look at this t statistic, okay? This x5 is now not significant anymore. And so we may now see this. What I'm trying to show you here is that this can become very complicated in real life statistics, okay? Uh, and, and I'm trying to show you that you have to be careful when, you're, when you yourself are a researcher that every time you make a change to this multiple regression model, it changes everything else. Okay, so just be aware of that. Okay, um, I think I'll do just one more example for you, but I'm not going to spend a whole. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm just going to. Um, I'm going to do it really quick, basically. Okay, uh, let me eliminate one of these columns. Delete. I'm going to go get my last set of data. Example three. Copy. I'm going to bring it over here into the notes. And I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to get rid of this stuff down here. And so here is my last one that I'm going to do. I'm going to try and do it really quick for you. We're going to go to data, data analysis, regression. We're going to select our y values, which are right here. Enter. We're going to select our x values, which are right here. Enter. We're going to select our output range. We're going to put it right here. And we're going to take off. We've got to remove constant is zero. We've got to remove this. But we're going to leave the labels on. Hit OK. We're going to overwrite. And here is our analysis. The smallest one here is x1. It's 1.492, which is probably not significant because my, my degrees of freedom is 5. 
So I'm going to eliminate x1 because I know that it's got to be at least 2, right? And this one is not at least 2. So I'm going to eliminate x1 again. I'm going to go to data, data analysis, regression, new inputs, just x2, x3, and x4. And I'm going to hit OK, overwrite, yes. Now, it, look at this. They're all significant. 3.386. Negative 3.384, negative 7.877, and the intercept is 8.071. And so I'm done with this multiple regression, and, and I'm going to use these four coefficients for my regression model. Okay? So that's it. That's multiple regression. Uh, you may have to watch this video a couple times, but until you do a whole bunch of practice, you're not going to be good at this. And if you have any questions, let me know.